In this probability lesson, we are having a look at arrangements with requirements in terms of grouping. We're immediately going to start with an example. A group of five friends are going to watch a show and will all sit in the same row. A. In how many different ways can they be arranged in the row? In this example, we have five seats that will now be filled by the five friends and therefore we have five tasks. Each person can of course only take one seat and therefore no repeating is allowed. This is also because it's an arrangement. Therefore you can immediately say that there will be five factorial options which will give us 120 different arrangements. Question B. Three of the friends want to sit next to each other. How many arrangements are possible now? So here we are receiving an extra requirement because three of these friends want to sit next to each other. When such a grouping requirement is given, the calculation will consist of two parts. Firstly, we are going to see those three friends as one big task because they want to sit next to each other and that means we now have three tasks. We already know that three tasks can be arranged in three factorial ways, which will give us six different arrangements. But now we need to realize that the first task actually consists of three smaller tasks, or three people in this case. Inside this task, the three people can of course also be rearranged, and each one of these will form a new arrangement for each of those six original arrangements. So task one actually also consists of three factorial different arrangements. This should then be multiplied by the original three factorial options, which in total will then give us 36 different arrangements. This means that when there's a requirement added about grouping, you will always take the possibilities or options of that specific group and multiply it with the total number of options if that group is seen as one task. Let's have a look at another example. Example 2. Three Americans, five Germans and four South Africans are all on the same tour and are forming a line to get on the bus. In how many different ways can they form the line? We are given no extra requirements here, so we can simply focus on the 12 people, which will be 12 tasks that need to be completed. Therefore, there are 12 factorial different ways, which will be 479,000,600 different ways they can form the line. Question B. How many different arrangements are possible if they must stand together according to their nationality? Because we have three different nationalities, we are going to start off by grouping them. And therefore, there will be three factorial different ways of arranging the different nationalities. The first nationality will then be the three Americans, which can be arranged in three factorial different ways. Then we have the five Germans, which can be arranged in five factorial different ways. And lastly, the four South Africans can be arranged in four factorial ways. Our final calculation will then be the original three factorial multiplied with the factorial for each of the different groups. And so from that original almost 500 million options, there are now only 103,680 options left. Question C. There is one South African and one German that refuse to sit next to each other. How many arrangements are possible now? Sometimes it helps if you rather do the opposite calculation. So here, instead of calculating all the different possibilities where these two do not sit next to each other, I'm going to take the total number of possible arrangements and from there subtract those where these two actually sit next to each other. 
If I then group the South African and the German together, we have 11 tasks and that will give us 11 factorial options. This should then be multiplied by the group's factorial and we only have two people in the group so that will be 2 factorial. This number of possibilities will now be subtracted from the total number. So my final calculation will be the 12 factorial giving me the total number of options minus this 11 factorial times 2 factorial and there are then 399,168,000 different arrangements left. Let's have a look at another example where the opposite calculation will be more effective. Example 3. Using the digits 1 to 9, how many 5 digit numbers can be constructed containing at least one 6 if digits may repeat? Because digits may repeat, this is not an arrangement anymore and the number of options per task will not decrease. The question is, how many 5 digit numbers can be constructed containing at least one 6? This means there can be 1, 2, 3, 4 or even 5 sixes. To calculate all these different possibilities will take some doing. Therefore, it will definitely be more effective to take the total number of possibilities and subtract the opposite of what they are asking. The opposite of at least one six will then be no sixes. Because the digits may be repeated, the total number of possibilities will then be 9 to the power of 5. And to contain no 6s means we have the digits 1 to 9 without the option of a 6 to choose from. Therefore, there will be 8 different options to choose from for each task. And that means the amount of numbers containing no 6s will be 8 to the power of 5. And therefore, there will be 26,281 different numbers that can be constructed containing at least one sixth.